I was gonna say, that was you that got him, because we just nailed that sniper. Kane died? I didn't even get the fucking notification that you were down. It happened really suddenly, too. I'm kind of confused. <laughs> Kane died. <laughs> Fuck you. So about a month ago, we talked about a game called Kane and Lynch Dead Men. Despite it being a below average to bad third person shooter, its narrative explored many interesting crime themes and presented them in a very sophisticated fashion. It's one of the very few games that showed us violence in a mature way without exploiting it, and it definitely deserved the praise it got for its story and characterization. Kane and Lynch was a critical mishap, but a commercial success, having sold over a million copies, automatically positioning it for a sequel. In 2010, Kane and Lynch 2 Dog Days was released. Now, I don't know what went on in the IO Interactive offices between 2008 and 2010, which were likely the years Kane and Lynch 2 was in core development, but whatever happened somehow managed to produce one of the worst games I have ever played. I say that a lot now, but this is the real deal. What we have here is a premium product that was poorly designed, and this is the worst type of game. From its level design, to its AI, to its weapons, Kanan Lynch 2 constantly borders on being flat out broken, and it's shit, and it's fucking awful. You know, I couldn't see his face at all with how much the camera was shaking. <laughs> like, I don't know, I don't know any discernible facial features he has other than that he's balding and he's wearing glasses. Dog Days automatically sets itself up for failure by being such a linear game. There's a key to doing linear games correctly, and it's called pacing. This game's pacing is absolutely horrible, with gunfights being dished out disproportionately and dragging on and on until you want to throw your face through your monitor. You'd think that with a game this linear, going through the levels would be a breeze, but this just isn't the case. The levels are designed as if Kane and Lynch 2 was an open world game, except this concept isn't even done well, because some of the levels play like mazes, only confusing the player as to where the hell they're going. This would be easily remedied by a minimap, but fucking surprise, Kane and Lynch 2 has no minimap because of reasons I can't fathom. The inconsistent shitshow doesn't end there, because some levels are clearly designed with hand-holding in mind, and there only being one possible path to progression. If the aim of designing levels like this was for realism, then they failed, because the game can't make up its mind on the sort of level design it wants to showcase. This monstrosity of a game tries to have it both ways in many aspects, the gunplay being the one that comes to mind immediately. If you've seen my videos, you know how critical I think decent gunplay is to a game. The first Kane and Lynch had pretty awful gunplay, with the recoil of the guns just being way too much. The positive thing about this gunplay, however, was the fact that all the guns had bullet tracers, so even against enemies far away, you had a way of gauging distance and where you were firing at. Kane and Lynch 2 has no bullet tracers, and because of this, it always feels like you're firing blanks into your enemies, and then they just drop dead. Of course, someone at IO Interactive must have realized that without bullet tracers, there's no feedback to the player that an enemy is being shot, so they did what all horseshit first-person shooters do when faced with this problem, and added in hit markers. But in typical Dog Days fashion, it even shits the bed in that regard, because in most games, you shoot and you get a single hit marker which tells the player that they've scored a hit. But in this game, you get a hit marker for every bullet that lands on the body, meaning that with every enemy encounter, you've got enough hit markers to activate a UAV, call in an airstrike, and deploy a fucking helicopter. The fun doesn't stop there, because you're only getting hit markers if you can land a hit on an enemy, and it's almost impossible because the accuracy of these guns is horrendous. The recoil is insane, and without tracers, you have no idea where you're firing anyways. 
It gets even worse when you consider that none of the weapons have single dot crosshairs, and they all subconsciously form a circle in the mind of the player. This means that bullets can go anywhere within the confines of this space, which only adds to the sheer lunacy of what this game is asking of the player. Think about it. There's recoil out the ass, no tracers, and on top of all this, now the game is saying that the bullets will just go anywhere anyways. What the fuck? <laughs> you know, as far as I'm concerned, you're just making sound that your mouth of the guy just fell down, because I'm not seeing any bullet fire or the trajectory. <laughs> That's the thing. This game is like... This game has no bullet tracers, so everything's hit marks, but the thing is, it's only gonna show up from the perspective of one fucking player. <laughs> It'd be one thing if the gunplay was bad, but at least there was a fluid movement for the gameplay. But let's be honest, you already know there isn't. All the gunfights are standstill, stay behind cover bullshit fests, with you shooting enemies so far away, they may as well be on the other side of the planet with gunplay this garbage. You can try to rush them, but you'll just be killed, because they have laser accuracy with their guns, and the time to death in this game is very short. Now, the first Kane and Lynch had a cover system that was pretty shit. Sometimes it would not work at all, or it would magnetize you to places you didn't want to be. Dog Days takes this to the next level by featuring the worst cover system you have ever seen. Oh! Behind the boxes and I got shot down. Yeah, that's the thing, I got down. Look at- Oh my god, what the fuck is it? <laughs> it said I was in Did cover. I <laughs> the cover system is very bad, mostly because it doesn't actually shield you from bullets. You can be behind cover, sometimes even under the damn cover, as in behind a huge stone wall, and still be shot or take damage from enemies. You take a little peek out of cover, and goodbye health. Being constantly shot at and taking damage doesn't really help when you're trying to aim from cover to shoot enemies. But don't worry, Dog Days has you covered there, because it allows you to literally shoot the cover itself as your arm bends and shoots behind you. At many points, I found myself shooting the wall I was pressed up against instead of the enemies. Oh, and sometimes, getting out of cover doesn't work. You can repeatedly press the button and it just won't respond. So imagine being shot at in every direction, having no idea where the enemies are, and not being able to leave cover for one to two seconds as you're riddled with bullets. And this brings me to my final point about why this is such an awful game. The AI is fucking stupid. Look, oh, look, geez. Watch, watch the CCC, look at this! Holy shit! <laughs> They're all coming out of there. <laughs> the AI is so shit. Oh my god, the AI is so fucking terrible in this game. <laughs> Wow, two, three guys. Wow, four fucking guys just tried to rush me or they were, they tried to go in this direction and they all got killed. They have pinpoint precision, but they're dumb as rocks and all seem to be attracted to the player if you're not playing co-op. They'll come out in hordes just to be shot to shit or they'll stay in cover until you fire 6,000 rounds into them of which only 10 will actually hit the enemy. Sometimes they'll leave cover for no discernible reason and, and just be killed. They don't seem suicidal like the alien AI in Colonial Marines, but there's no drive to them at all. And you may as well be shooting big blocks with no textures because that's all the variation you're getting out of them. The ally AI is also just horrible. I blasted through the game with Kane giving minimal help, if any. And during the second or third level, one of the friendly AI decided to stop caring and in the middle of a firefight, casually walked from one cover to another. In short, this game is fucking infuriating. The gameplay is just so bad because you're constantly being shot at and have to constantly stay in cover. 
you have zero awareness of where the enemy is because of the lack of minimap, and when you do spot an enemy, there's no real guarantee that you'll actually be able to hit them because the accuracy of the weapons is so shit that shotguns are more accurate than assault rifles. It's also worth noting that this game is a gimmicked piece of shit because its visual style resembles that of something being shot on a handheld camera. The glitch effect is overwhelming, the large glowing lights blind the player, and everything in the game has a lens flare. For those wondering why I haven't talked about the camera shake, it's because I played with it for about 5 minutes, was thoroughly disgusted, and then turned it off. This dysentery smoothie wouldn't be complete without bad sound, and just watch this. Therefore, I make this offer. Mr. Lynch. I think the most frustrating thing about Kane and Lynch 2 is that it strips away everything that made that first game interesting and praiseworthy. To be fair, it's not like Dog Days betrays the Kane and Lynch characters, but it just does nothing with them, and there's no depth to them at all. Listen to director Jens Peter Korup describe Kane and Lynch while working on the first game. Two fairly normal men that ruin their lives. It's, uh... And they ruined it so badly that they can't really come back to it again. So they, they lost their connection with their old life and they're trying to fix it so much. Like very, very, really trying to fix the trouble. But the harder they try, the worse they make it. And they're both in a situation where they never really, they always fail. It's clear that there was a lot of thought put into these characters. And you don't really see that in Dog Days. There's also a clear distinction in the level of writing between the two games. In Dead Men, you're introduced to the Seven, the main antagonists, and they air their grievances with Cain, thus establishing the plot. In Dog Days, Cain just asks Lynch who the big villain is, and then Lynch gives him exposition in the middle of a walking segment. There's an astounding lack of direction in Dog Days that it never recovers from. But even with that, even with this terrible game, you can see flashes of what makes these two characters so great and interesting to observe. How's your daughter? <coughs> she's fine. I, I mean, after what she went through, <coughs> I said I... she's fine, okay? Don't start fucking around. Okay, okay, okay. I'm, I'm sorry. Fuck! <laughs> Lynch, I need you to calm down. No, go fuck yourself, Kane! Fuck off home! That's what you want! Towards the end, there's some very good dialogue where Lynch asks Cain why people around them always die, and he questions their merit as human beings. Another great moment is right before the last mission, when Cain makes a phone call. Jenny. It's your father. In, uh, I'm sorry. I know we haven't spoken since... Uh... Look, I'm, uh, I'm coming home. I hope we can put the past behind us. I'm done with all this, baby. And I hope you can forgive me. But, sweetheart, if you don't see me, I, uh, I want you to know I love you. The last hour of Dog Days does seem to remember that Kane and Lynch live lives of regret, 
but it's too little, too late. And the ending to this game is one of the worst ever. I was talking to Cyanide Blizzard about this game, and we both agreed that Dog Days is very strange. I think it feels like DLC, and it's not a story that was worth telling. Dog Days sounds like a small chapter in the lives of these characters that would be mentioned in passing during a bigger game. Like, Kane, you remember Shanghai? Or something like that. I'll be honest and say that talking about this game depresses me because Kane and Lynch 2 is horrendous and it didn't have to be. The only silver lining here is that this game somehow managed to sell over a million copies, which may make it the worst, most successful game of all time. It's possible that because it didn't totally bomb, that we may see these two glorious bastards again, but I'm not holding my breath or really clamoring for it after this uh, abomination. So, fuck this game. Fuck it in its censored ass. Rest in piss. I guess that's it then. I don't. I don't want to fucking play this. Anymore. I guess that's it. Because I mean, we can't play the multiplayer. There's not enough people. Um, oh, you mm -hmm. know what we could do? We could force it on other people since it's on sale. <laughs> and then gonna, they could play it. Who's gonna play this shit with us? <laughs> hey, it's a surprise. It's called Kane and Lynch Two. Don't read up on anything about it. Just, just <laughs> install it and come play. <laughs> yeah. It'll be fun. I promise. So, how'd you like Shanghai, Kane? It's fucked. I hate it. <laughs>